This video is sponsored by Fiverr, connecting you with the freelancers you need to help you build your brand, including logo designers, voiceover artists, website developers, and more. So be sure to hit that link in the description, which will take you to my personalized store with nothing but my favorite top Fiverr sellers that I personally am super excited to use. So the mission for today is to create a nice cinematic image with a very small camera. It's not the size of the camera that matters, it's how you use it, or something like that. Cause yeah, you know, if you want a cinematic image, just sell your car and your soul and just buy one of these and easy. But I kept thinking like, how do I make an image look even more cinematic, but at a smaller size and even cheaper? I did some thinking and this is what I came up with. It's censored right now, not because it's an inappropriate object, but because I don't want you guys to know what it is yet. I kind of want to show you guys some footage out of this setup here. In this mystery setup, fraction of the cost of the Canon EOS R. So you guys get to play the guessing game and try to figure out what setup I'm using but let's take it outside and get some footage. This thing's gonna make it so I can get into some deep shit and still get myself out. <laughs> There you go. What'd you guys think of the footage so far? Not bad, right? It actually looks kind of professional. I'll take it. So can the little mystery camera take cinematic footage? Yes check how about some of the convenient features for vloggers and YouTubers. First, you need to get one of these switch pot. I can't recommend this thing enough. And then a little ball head up here so you can actually angle the camera in different directions. I drop this little sensor bar on top of it and a little hint, I used two different lenses for that sequence we shot. Most important part is this microphone up here which is actually kind of bigger than the camera itself. But you gotta have it, the sound quality out of this, so much better. Anyways, I gotta pick up something from Steve's house, so let's go. It works. Oh, it works. We're borrowing this from Steve to take a thumbnail. If you're a subscriber, you probably have already seen it. But yeah, hopefully it works out. It's 220 miles per hour. Can we blow it in Steve's face? Let's do it. I think I've got some chunky cheeks, so I think it should do a nice blah, blah, blah. If this is anything like when we punched him with the boxing gloves and his face shook, this should be epic. <laughs> ah, you can't breathe. Let's see what this looks like at 120 frames per second. All right, so here's the thumbnail I have in mind. We're talking about laptops that can edit 8K. So we got a red camera here, and we got our laptop here, and then we got blow dryer. Hell yeah. All right, so we got some good shots, but they're just not really registering that much that it's wind. It just kind of looks like I'm making a goofy face. So we looked at that classic photo of that guy sitting on a couch. And what really sells it is his posture and his tie. So I got this shirt on now. We got a tie on. We're gonna go for a take two. Let's start putting this underneath and just go straight up. I think that one's this. I think that's the way to do it. All right, so let's wrap this day up by going out and eating some wings. Our buddy Avi told us that there's this spot here that has super spicy wings. So we're gonna see if we can handle it. Sam, you feel confident about this? <laughs> Did you forget who you're talking to? <laughs> but yeah, earlier we did have a microphone on this rig, but just to make this camera look even smaller, we're just gonna completely strip it down, no microphone. Because the issue with bringing a big old camera into a restaurant is they're gonna see it and immediately kick you out. So something this nice and compact should let us fly under that radar. So that evening we made a couple of mistakes. One, ordering the hottest chicken on the menu, which we ended up deeply regretting the next morning. But of course we still stuck through it because we're hardcore like that. <laughs> the second mistake I made was that I was shooting at a 150th of a shutter speed, which is typically where I want to be for that frame rate. The lighting there was flickering, so you can kind of see it. They look like horizontal dark bars that kind of roll from the top to the bottom. You can't really see it with your eyes, but on camera, obviously, it shows up. Easy fix for that, at least here in America, is to switch the shutter to 1 60th of a second, depending on the standards of your country's electrical current. That could be different, but generally, when I see flicker like that, I can set it to 1 60th 
of a second and it will reduce it if not completely cut it out. And my final big mistake was taking off that external microphone. I should have just left it on because the audio came out like crap. Are you a spicy food guy? So external microphones a must, especially in a crowded place like that. But overall, the low light performance is excellent, right? We're walking around at night and everything looks very clear and sharp still, not a crazy amount of grain. So overall, I'd say this is a very capable camera. One final test before I tell you guys which camera this is, is the autofocus, which is important because notice how blurry that background is, right? So you need some pretty good autofocus to stay up with me. Ha! And I'm sharp. See, that's actually pretty good. And it does also have a flip screen so I can't see myself. So it does check off a lot of the boxes that vloggers want. Peter, are you ready for the answer? Okay, let's go. And the answer is Canon M6 Mark II. Now this might not come as a surprise to many of you because I just made a video about it and how it's surprisingly capable for its price point and size. But I'm actually more excited about the lens that's on here. These are brand new lenses from Sigma and they've been dominating lately. Like these Sigma art lenses that I bought, loving these. I also bought the Sigma 30 millimeter for my Sony a6400. And finally, they're rolling out lenses for the Canon EF-M line, which is greatly needed because this EF-M line has needed some solid lenses and here they are. Now this is an APS-C size sensor, so we are talking about a crop of about 1.6X, but the beauty of having smaller sensors is that you can make the lens a little bit more capable at a more compact size. So this is a 16 millimeter f1.4 and since this does have a crop sensor it's closer to a 24 millimeter f1.4 but if you look at a full frame version of this lens it's way bigger and way more expensive. And that's across the board too. Here's the other lens I was using. This is a 56 millimeter f1.4 so this converts into a nice slightly telephoto or a great portrait lens. So even if you have a smaller sensor like an APS-C that's in this camera you can actually kind of use it to your advantage if you utilize the lenses that are out there and these are a perfect example. This isn't sponsored by Sigma by the way. I think they just did a killer job making lenses that are very capable specifically for smaller size sensors. So I love that. I can't really do the math in my head right now but this camera body and then this lens and then this tighter lens that's how much the total is. Opposed to something like this EOS R which we do get that full frame but here's how much it is for the body and this lens actually on here right now is I think more than the camera body itself. So this right here, total right, oh, so expensive. So if you have that kind of budget, yeah, go for it. I mean, I love this camera, but just because you can afford the body on this, remember that there's a lot more to come when it comes to lenses. So considering that there's these high quality Sigma lenses for this EFM mount makes this Canon camera a lot more attractive. I mean, you guys saw the footage, so you can decide for yourself, but I, I'm impressed. If you see my recent review about this camera, you know that it actually doesn't shoot 24 frames per second yet. It is supposed to be coming in a firmware update in 2020. So hopefully we see that rolling out in the next few months. So that would be awesome. But currently this video is made in 25 frames per second. I can switch this camera into PAL mode and get 25 frames per second, which looks very, very similar to 24. It's just kind of annoying because it's like a little technical limitation. It's just kind of a inconvenience when I shoot everything in 24 and this camera shoots 25. But again, this is a temporary issue that Canon promises to fix. And the other big issue is when you put a microphone up here, you can't really see yourself with the monitor because it is a flip up screen instead of a flip out screen. But a company called Small Rig Digits announced that they are releasing a little bracket which will make the hot shoe located over here. It will technically a cold shoe if it doesn't have electronic components and it's called a cold shoe, but you know, we're just using it to hold this microphone here in place. So it will hold the microphone like that so you can still use your flip screen. And this is generally what your vlog setup would look like. Anyways, let's wrap this up by reading a few comments from my last video. Let's go. Top comment was from Connor. Google left the chat. <laughs> so for those of you who haven't seen it, my overall conclusion was that the video camera is very... Just like Dan says, I would have to say meh on the quality. That's kind of one of the awkward situations to get into is like, I really appreciate that Google is willing to send me a phone 
for free. But as a filmmaker, if I don't like the video quality out of the phone, I just, I kind of have to say it. But when I started this YouTube channel, I told myself no matter what happens, I'm going to keep honesty as priority number one. That is going to be more important than the number of views, the number of subscribers, the money, all that. So whenever companies are like, hey, we'll give you money to say good things about our product, I always have to push back a little bit and say, oh, my opinions aren't for sale. But just out of curiosity, how much money are we talking about? Nick says, didn't you say last time you were taking the Jeep to a professional next time? <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things that like, I'm not a professional mechanic. But there's something just satisfying about taking a wrench and just doing this motion. It's very validating. Like I feel really tough doing it. I kind of like it. <laughs> oh, and I almost forgot. This is a sponsored video. So giveaway GoPro Hero 7 Black coming out to one of you guys. All you got to do is drop a comment down below. And yes, this is a hand-me-down. This is the Hero 7 Black. So not the brand new shiny 8, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to get the 8. Should I get it? Is, 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 is it much but I have to do a little bit of research on that. But yeah, final words from our sponsor. Fiverr empowers us and our brands by giving us easy access to a global community of freelancers to help you build your brand, including logo designers, copywriters, website developers, professional voiceover, storyboard artists, and more. So check out my curated store in the description below for my recommendations on top Fiverr sellers. So hit that link. I've been meaning to tell you, but I've been trying to be nice about it, but your logo kind of sucks. It, it, it needs some work so you know now's probably a good time to get it professionally made so what you're waiting for get on it